right. It is time for us to get started. And even though I have a microphone, I am in my yelling voice. My name is Lindsay Anderson, and uh, I am the chairman of this year's MIT Sloan CIO Symposium. And I'd like to welcome you all to the MIT Sloan CIO Leadership Award Dinner. We are gathered here today for an excellent view of Boston, for some networking, uh, for some excellent food and drink, and first and foremost, to honor four exceptional CIOs. Before we get started with that, I'd like to make a few announcements around the people that have made this event and this dinner possible. When the Enterprisers Project asked me what differentiates the symposium from other CIO events, I said it was a symposium that combines the academic thought leadership of MIT with the global hands-on experience of leading CIOs. I also said it was the only major conference held on an, MIT, in, on an academic conference, uh, excuse me, on an academic campus. And most importantly, I said it is the only major large conference run by volunteers. So volunteers, I'd like you to raise your hands, and I'd like to thank you for your intellectual curiosity, your dedication, and your hard work. The dinner and the symposium would not be possible without the support and backing of the MIT Boston Alumni Association. So board members, would you please raise your hands? Thank you. And where would the symposium be without our thought leaders? I'd like to thank our academic partners, IDE, the Initiative on the Digital Economy, and CISER, the MIT Center for Information Systems Research, for their outstanding contributions to the symposium. Please raise your hands. And I'd like to thank our speakers for bringing their insights and war stories to the symposium. The symposium isn't just about theory, it's about in putting theory to work. Thank you, speakers. And I'd also like to thank our sponsors. Without their financial support, this dinner and the symposium would not be possible. Specifically, I'd like to thank Diamond Sponsors C3 IoT. And tomorrow, <laughs> And tomorrow, you'll all be thanking them for the gourmet coffee they will be providing. <laughs> I'd also like to thank Platinum sponsors Equinix and Salesforce. <laughs> Gold sponsors Level 3, Corn Ferry, Cast, McKinsey, Top Coder, Early Information Science, Russell Reynolds, Markley, and IBM. <laughs> Finally, let me thank our bronze sponsors, MIT Professional Education, Zoom, and MIT Sloan Executive Education. <laughs> Each of our sponsors brings great insights and inform to information technology, I urge you to visit their booths tomorrow and drink as much coffee as you can. <laughs> now let me circle back to the primary purpose of today's meeting, 
to honor four exceptional CIOs. I'll start by introducing my partner in crime, George Westerman. George is a principal research scientist for the MIT Initiative on the Digital Economy, and he's co-chair of the award organization. The award criteria derived from the real business of IT, how to create, uh, how CIOs create and communicate value. Uh, he is also the co-author, along with Andy McAvee, who's also here, of learning, uh, leading digital, turning information into business transformation. George will be doing double duty tomorrow as a moderating uh, a panel of all the finalists as well as a panel of the future of work. Please welcome George. Uh, thanks, Lindsay. And let's give special recognition to Lindsay, actually, for the amount of work he puts it together. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to get volunteers to get things done on time. Uh, Lindsay has this magical ability to actually make that happen. Uh, an organization this big and nobody's paid. So Lindsay is able to pull that whole thing together and it's just fantastic. Um, and those of you who've seen over the last couple of years the improvements we've been doing and how the session's going over and over again, a lot of that comes down to Lindsay's leadership. So let's talk about the award though. Um, you know, I'm with the Initiative on the Digital Economy and what we study is how are people going to live and work and prosper in an age of radical digital transformation. Um, and that is important for people. It's also important for organizations, though. How are they going to live and work and prosper? And at the center of that, in many organizations, is CIOs. Uh, you know, in, the times of, in these times of digital, CIOs are really at a crossroads. Do they take the bull by the horns? Do they play a really strong role in leading digital and helping their organizations move forward? Or do they just act like a support person, live in the back office, and get ignored by the rest of the organization? I think you know which one I'd prefer. Uh, the way I'd say it is this, you know, there's never been a greater time to be a great CIO, and there's never been a worse time to be an average CIO. And unfortunately, too many of the CIOs we talk to are still trying to be average CIOs. They're just trying to run IT. They may or may not be doing it well, but they're stopping there. They're missing the opportunity and what I would actually call an obligation to take, to take the next step to really transform the businesses they work in to help either do it themselves or to work with their senior executives to get there. Um, but what's wrong? What's in the way? Why, why, why are CIOs not doing that? Uh, well, one, maybe they don't know better. I mean, we taught them 20 years ago to be about really about running IT. Um, we've been teaching them th different things since then, but maybe they haven't been hearing it. But maybe the other thing is they just don't have enough examples of how this has been done well. You know, we've got me, we've got Abby, we've got a bunch of other people out here telling CIOs how they're supposed to act but maybe they just don't believe us. That's why we created this award. We want to have great CIOs doing amazing things in your organization and just show the rest of the world what's possible if you just put your mind to it and make it work. And over the last couple of years, I think you've seen some of the amazing people uh, that have been able to do this. Dave Neitz, for example, won just last year. And what he's been able to do in transforming the whole process of building huge infrastructure projects government projects that take forever, and with one change, you can take a year out of the schedule or completely transform the customer experience. That's the kinds of CIOs we're looking for. And that's, I think, what we found here with the finalists that we have this year. So uh, before I talk about the finalists, I just want to recognize the, uh, the award and the process that people went through. Uh, first, I want to recognize Mike Johnson. Mike, are you here? Uh, Mike had the vision and the foresight to create this award. Uh, he co-created this award 11 years ago. Um, I don't know what you were thinking, <laughs> but it's turned out to be just an amazing, amazing thing. And Mike has stayed on the committee that organizes this event for the last 11 years making this happen. So Mike, thank you. I've already thanked Lindsay for all the work he's done. I want to thank my co-chair, uh, Ray Chang, also. Uh, Ray's right here. Um, I'm convinced that Ray never sleeps. I get, a, I get emails. I get up at 5.30 every morning, and Ray already has two or three emails in my inbox by that point. 
Uh, and then he gets them to me late at night, too. Maybe there are just two of you. Is that how it works? I'm in a different time zone. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, so so Ray, you know, Ray's got a full-time job and still works on the board of the, the alumni committee and still helps with the, uh, the award committee and still helps with a thousand other things on the work. So it's Ray, thank you. So, you know, how do we find these great fan finalists? One is we've got great people who apply. So those of you who are finalists, thank you for applying. Uh, you are truly the cream of the crop. The other way we find these great CIOs, uh, CIO finalists, is we have a really rigorous um, a re a review process here. So it starts in round one, where a lot of people go through a very strong academics, you know, like you're, you're teaching to the rubric, and they review these CIOs, and they, then certain ones bubble up to the top. So those of you who are part of our round one review process, can you just raise your hands? Okay, great, thank you. We gotta get a few more of them to come to dinner next time. That's the only reward for doing all this work is you get a free dinner. Uh, round two, what we've done is instead of having people review, we have CIOs review. So the people who are round, re review in round two are people who are past finalists of the award. They're people who really know what they're doing in IT. And so when they say this is a great, I, the great person that MIT should promote as a finalist, they actually are, having been there, know exactly what they're doing. And so the, do we have any of the round two judges here? Mike, you're here. Dave, you're here. Anybody else? Okay, great, well thank you. And Dieter, Dieter, you're here. I got a note from Dave Dieter earlier saying I'm gonna be late, and Dieter's never late, so. Uh, all right, great. <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, you know, lots of people apply. We turn that into a small number of semifinalists. We have this incredibly hard job. It was really hard this year of getting that down to four finalists. And then we have to decide what to do from there. At that point, Ray and Lindsay and I and Irving, where are you, Irving? Uh, Irving Wodowski, if you don't know Irving, he is a true legend of the field. Um, and so he is also a, a fourth person here. We interview each of the candidates. And we try to get behind their application and understand more about them, what they've done, and what they are as leaders and as people. And then we get to decide, uh, which is usually a very long, heated battle in deciding on the winner. Uh, and that, then we come up with the announcement. So that's where we are today. So let me just first start then, having gone through that process uh, that the we go through, let me start to announce the finalists for you. So um, I'll just go through an alphabetical order on them and uh, tell you a little bit about each one. Okay. Can we start first with uh, Carla Bazzoli? Carla, you're over here, right? Can you just stand up and, fantastic, great, thank you. <laughs> well, let me, let, me, let, me, let me explain it then. Yeah, great. Uh, Carlo is the CIO at NL, which is a very large utility company that I had never heard of until he submitted his, uh, his application. And that's shame on me. They're doing amazing things in Europe uh, for, for producing and distributing. Uh, and Carlo, you know, he did the CIO thing, all the CIO things that CIOs are supposed to do, but he didn't stop there. So, you know, you're hearing about utilities trying to implement a smart grid. Carlo did that, but he said, you know, that's not enough. We need to do more than that. And so now that they've got the smart grid in, now that they've got some integration among their, their information, integration among their systems, he said we should really start applying AI to this problem. So what Carlo is doing, he's not running a smart grid, he's applying machine language, machine learning and AI to do predictive maintenance on his smart grid. Cutting back on the cost of smart grid, improving the reliability, and making it just that much more efficient. He's also doing the same kinds of things to understand uh, who's stealing money from the system. Right? Who's plugged in when they're not supposed to be plugged in? They can tell what's happening there, and he's going out and catching these people through the analysis on the smart grid. So you know, if the great CIOs and the great digital leaders are always asking, what else can we do? What else can we do? What else can we do? They're never happy with where they are. Carla's a great example of having done that. And I just can't wait to see, Carla, what you do next. So Carla, come on up. Let's give you uh, your plaque. Um, next up is Julia Davis. Julia's over here. 
Julia, uh, so congratulations, Julia. Uh, Julia joined Affleck as a senior VP and CIO in July of 2013. Now, Affleck is an interesting company. We all know about the duck, right, and the branding that goes on there, right? Uh, I made the mistake of calling it a goose in our judging interview, <laughs> and Julia corrected me on that. Um, what I didn't know about Affleck is, while it's a well-known brand, and while they do really good work, they're actually located in this really sleepy town in Georgia. And that creates extra challenges for Julia to do work because while people would love to work in Atlanta, you're not always sure you want to work in Columbus, Georgia, right on the Alabama border. Uh, and so Julia has transformed the IT department, turned it into a really well-oiled machine while not having the option to bring in the Silicon Valley or the really amazing urban talent that she might. She took the people she had and she changed the culture there to make it about, make it about results to make it about delivery, make it about being closer to the IT, uh, to the business community. And uh, it's just amazing the kinds of things she's accomplished. But once again, what else do we do from there? She said, that's not good enough. We've transformed IT. Let's start transforming the business too. And so she took a giant role in helping to connect parts of the business together and do something that I wish my insurance company could do, which is they can pay a claim in one day. You file the claim, the check shows up tomorrow. That's just unbelievable. Any of you who have been in insurance companies know just how hard that is. Julia made that happen. And, uh, you know, and she's got other things up her sleeve that she's just been hinting at uh, that we'll find out soon enough. So Julia, congratulations. We have, a, we have a nice international representation on our finalists this year. Uh, Carlos from Italy. Uh, Julia is from Georgia. A very foreign place from, from Massachusetts. <laughs> and Dave Gled, Gledhill, uh, the next finalist, is from Singapore. So Dave, Dave Gledhill is a DBS bank in Singapore. Uh, so, so Dave's the CIO, he's also the head of group technology and operations at DBS. And those of you who know banks, uh, if, you're, if you're in charge of technology and operations, what it really means is you're in the billions on your, on your IT budgets rather than just the millions. Now, I don't know how big D DBS is, but he's got an awful lot of stuff he's got to do. And those of you who know banks also know how hard it is to get anything done when you're talking about rationalizing and improving and speeding up things in large banks. Um, having said that, though, uh, Dave got it done. He improved the IT department. Uh, he delivered better service in the branches. He improved better customer service in, in what's going on. Um, and that's all kind of cool. I mean, DBS, from what I understand, um, has been named the world's best digital bank, which is really pretty neat. And even more, because I, from what I understand, DBS used to be understood as damn bloody slow. <laughs> so that transformation is enough to say that's really pretty cool. Um, but if I keep coming back to this theme of what else can we do, um, Dave and his colleagues just launched a digital bank in India. And the digital bank is run as sleekly and as efficiently that you know if I've got 500 rupees, I can put them in a bank. And, still, and Dave can still treat me the right way and still give me good service because it's done as, as a very efficient digital process with not many people in there. Now the other cool thing about DBS is they're running the digital bank and some physical banks actually near each other. They're trying to work that together. But it's all being coordinated from, the, from Dave and his colleagues at the business executive level. Uh, so I've just been really impressed with what they've been able to do on not only transforming the physical bank, but launching a digital bank and making this thing really take off. So uh, congratulations to Dave. Uh, last but not least, in alphabetical order, he, we only got up to G this time. We have no W's, and we need more W's in this process. Um, I'm a Westerman. I believe that. Uh, so 
Steve Gold's our fourth person. Steve is not here. Uh, he called us this morning. Uh, unfortunately, his wife had to go to the hospital today. And so he called and said, listen, you know, I think I can make it tomorrow. And we basically said, if your wife's in the hospital, don't come tomorrow. So he will not be here tonight. He will not be here tomorrow. Um, but, you know, he's, he, he and his wife, his wife's stable. They're together. They're working together now. But, you know, he's in our thoughts and prayers. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about what Steve did, because he can't be here to tell, tell you himself. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve is the CIO at um, CVS. Now, anybody from around here, you know CVS. It's the local drugstore chain. It is one of the two top drugstore chains in the country. And um, if you stop there, you'd know it's a hard job to run that. But CVS doesn't stop there. CVS has an insurance company called a pharmacy benefits man manager. They have specialty care. So if you're a diabetic or other things where you're on long-term chronic need, they give you that special service. And they also have short clinics. They have the minute clinics where you can come and get a flu shot or things like that whenever you need them. All these different silos inside of CVS, Dave was the CIO trying to get synergies among them. Now, it's hard enough to do it in a retailer. It's even harder to do it in an insurance company. But to be able to transform the way IT happens in all four of those is really something. And then he started building the infrastructure so they could learn from each other and commit and work together much more clearly in a digital sense and also as an IT organization. So beyond turning IT org around for CVS and CVS uh, and Caremark, the pharmacy benefits manager and all the other pieces, he started connecting the silos together when they don't necessarily want to talk to each other. So now your specialty care, your diabetics medicine or whatever, that kind of thing, instead of mail order, you can pick it up in the local pharmacy. Or a local pharmacy customer can suddenly become a customer for the mail order at the insurance company because they're able to integrate across the silos in ways they've never done before. So he took a hard job in one business, turned it into a, a successful job in four businesses and started integrating those together. Uh, so it's really impressive what he's been able to create. And I'm just sorry we, he can't be here to share in, in the honor here. But let's all congratulate Steve Gold. So uh, Ray will accept for Steve Gold here. <laughs> we'll, we will make sure he gets this award. And now, let's, let's quote Ray. These CIOs set themselves apart with their high-level strategic focus, their exceptional technology offerings, enable our, digitally economy, our digital economy to thrive. Thanks for that, Ray. <laughs> Is that what I said? And now for the moment of truth, we'd like to announce the winner of the 2017 MIT CIO Sloan Leadership Award. The winner is Dave Gledhill from DBS Bank. Wow, well that's quite something. It's worth the trip from Singapore. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, it's kind of been a very interesting journey the last eight or nine years that I've been with DBS. We started off with a fairly sleepy and somewhat bloated Singapore bank and the experiment was whether we could transform that into a, a world-leading uh, world bank and drive that transformation through a digital journey. And we had three kind of key principles that we kept in mind the whole time. And, Principle one is that we weren't going to just put digital lipstick on our bank. We we're going to go really deep and re-engineer right to the core to build the right platform that we could expand from. And point two is that we wanted to create great experiences. Uh, and, our, and our vision as a bank is making banking joyful. Um, now, when one of the executives on the management team came up with that, we thought it was a little strange, but you know, it stuck and resonated and really drives everything we do. It's our purpose is to make banking joyful. And point three is he said, we're going to do this digital thing without going to hire a bunch of people and sit them in a corner because our own people can't do it. We want to reinvent from the core and bring our own people along with us on that innovation journey as well. So really, this award is kind of a, a big thanks to my whole uh, leadership team, uh, everybody that works for me, and uh, the CEO and chairman of the company who supported this whole thing uh, throughout that, that journey. Um, and I just want to thank the people in this room, first of all, the, uh, the judges, uh, it was a pretty rigorous process. I was on the other end of that, so I can attest to it. So <laughs> thanks to Ray and George and Lindsay for, for, for all of that. 
Um, I also want to thank uh, Lindsay and the organizers of, of the symposium, all the volunteers here, because this is you know, truly a, a, a magnificent event. I've been for a, for a couple of years now. It's one of the best in the world, but you just get such a, a smart bunch of people here uh, discussing some really fabulous topics and without too much of a sales overload that you tend to get at these conferences. So we've taken a lot of learnings from what we've learned at uh, uh, MIT CISO uh, and, and the CISA and apply that back in DBS. So you're a big part of our journey uh, journey as well. Uh, and that extends as well to, I guess, you know, everybody in the room, the attendees. You know, I find a great deal of value in the conversations of, of people around the place. Uh, I think learning from each other and then trying to apply that into, a, into our environments is, is very, very important. So I guess, you know, the award is also thanks to everybody here and at the uh, conference tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to it. It's been a great CIO adventure for me uh, for the last eight years. We're not done yet. Uh, and so this whole notion and the theme of the conference of now, next and beyond uh, is, uh, is true. I'm going to enjoy tomorrow and then take some things back and try some more stuff in Singapore. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so I think you see uh, from this finalist that I talked about, how hard it is to choose a winner among there. And thank, frankly, I think we ought to find a way to declare four winners next year uh, for this. But uh, one of the things we've done because of the expertise and the, the accomplishments of these, these finalists is we try to get them as much airtime as possible at the symposium. So uh, certainly they're here. Uh, and at the same time, every single, every panelist will be on a lunchtime panel tomorrow where we'll talk about what they've been doing to shape their work at their organization and where they're going with that. And then each panel is also, sorry, each CIO finalist will also be on another panel during the day uh, just to share their expertise on different topics. So stop by and see them again on, on, on tomorrow. And at, at that point, I think I turn it over to Lindsay uh, to take the next step. <laughs> So I think the next step is really food. Um, so I, I think, yes, um, thank you all. Um, it's been a wonderful dinner. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be a great symposium. <laughs>